Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and I have just completed my Tonic Studios Delightful Dresser and Advent Accessory Gift Box die set. Um, and I did not actually create the dresser as it is intended to be used because the first thing that came to mind when I saw the reveal of this die set during birthday week not too long ago was a mini album. I for sure wanted to create a mini album using this die set and I had in my mind exactly how I wanted to do it and by and large all of the things that I wanted to try out actually worked out and that's not often the case. Sometimes I have some ideas that don't quite pan out but this is a huge die set. There are 51 dies. It does come with this A4 magnetic sheet and a um, plastic folder that all of this comes in as well and it's actually two full sheets of dies. So you get a lot of dies, lots of decorative panels, lots of um, fun different things to use to um, create your dresser and uh, really make it as ornate as you want. And so the other thing that uh, is really novel is that there are a set of dies where you can create your own little um, kind of swinging closure, but you don't need a brad. All of this is paper and yet it swings. And all you have to do is just glue this down um, onto your project and then you have this nice um, swinging element. So I think that's really novel and really awesome and you don't need special hardware or as I mentioned brads or anything like that and you can still have that um, mechanism. So really unique and um, when, something that I've never seen really in, in a die set. So very awesome. So let me show you my project and here it is, my dresser mini album. So fully um, decorated on all sides and it turned out really awesome, I think. It's definitely a labor of love. Um, I think I'll be doing at least one more exactly like this, maybe with some um, improvements, but for the most part, as I mentioned, this turned out exactly as I kind of um, saw in my head. So the first thing that I thought would be really neat to try is um, to create photo frames because as a album um, I thought it might be cute to actually have um, photos that are on the front of your dresser. These are however magnetic and so you can remove them um, and they they stick on there um, but they are uh, swappable with these back panels. So one of the things, because this is a gift, um, is I thought it might be good to give the option of, well, you know, what if there aren't two photos you want to have on display? Uh, maybe you want something like that, where you're just displaying one and you have the nice um, ornate decorative panel on the other. And um, and so you have that option. And then you could even, if you wanted, kind of stack these on top of each other. If you still wanted to put a you know photo on the back, but have the decorative panel over top, you know, maybe that's an option too. So a lot of different ways that you can kind of mix and match. Um, but I just like the fact that if you wanted just to have the one photo on display, you could definitely do that. And, um, and I just have this as a temporary panel here. So you can actually pull this out and then slip your actual photo in there. But that's so that they know that this is actually a frame that they can uh, slot a photo into. And whichever panels you don't use on the front, you can go ahead and just um, put on the back. The thing that um, I experimented with that turned out really well was embedding thin magnets into uh, the layers of this panel so that you get nice and smooth, completely flush uh, thin panels. So as you can see there, you can't tell that there is, that there are magnets that are embedded in this panel. Usually what I would do is, um, you know, put the magnet down and then 
put a layer of cardstock over top and then as I go to burnish I just I try to burnish really well so that that magnet is well stuck in there but ultimately that means that there's a slightly raised area where you can actually see the magnet coming through um, and it has that sort of impression because it's um, you know a different level there but the um, you know these panels are nice and flush and you can't tell that there's a magnet embedded there um, and that makes them sit really nicely onto the dresser. So I think that was something that I experimented with. I did that technique once during, um, as I was making the interactive um, frame, beveled frame project, and I ultimately didn't need to do it on that project, but for here, um, it definitely is useful, and so that came out to be a very practical um, technique for this. Um, and in fact, if I had thought about it and realized it earlier, because I didn't realize that this side uh, sort of leg piece extends above my two um, panels here, um, I would have done that technique here as well. I would have embedded these magnets into this leg piece because I did um, stack multiple layers of these leg pieces so that they're nice and thick that um, and they can withstand sort of the weight of the mini album. So it would have, these two pieces would snap together much more sort of flush if these magnets here were actually embedded into this piece here and um, instead of kind of raised over top. You can see how thin my magnets are. Um, there are only like a couple of uh, thicknesses of, you know, I think 110 pound cardstock. So it only takes, you know, a couple layers of cardstock to really hide that. And I do have a tutorial video on how I made this exact project. And so if you do want to check out any of the techniques that I'm about to describe, you can go ahead and check out that video. So I'll link to it up here and um, in the description box below or at the end of this video if you want to watch to the end. So, um, so as I was mentioning, uh, this is a, a closure here, so you can swing that open and then um, open up your album. Now, the only problem, and I'll, I'll admit to this so that you just know, uh, because these are magnetic, if you do handle, you know, this um, kind of roughly, they do have a tendency to just kind of fall off because, you know, they're meant to be removable. So, you know, as you're viewing the album, it's possible that having those be removable elements may not be the most practical. So you can be the judge for yourself. If you're making this for yourself, um, you'll, you're going to know exactly how you, you want your front um, and back to look. So there's no reason to have those be um, swappable and magnetic and it may be better to just go ahead and glue it down. Um, so those are the trade-offs. So depending on how much the album will get handled and, um, and whether you want uh, variability or, you know, swappability in those frames. So that's sort of a trade-off there. Um, on this panel itself, there are some more magnets that are hidden here. These four right here, those uh, marry up to these four here. And that is so that this um, kind of, you know, unit here stays nice and, and kind of um, attached uh, as much as possible. And I could have um, maybe afforded to put some more magnets than just the four to really hold that in there. But you can see it, it holds it and I'm holding it upside down and it's, and it's not dropping, but if I wiggle it a little, you know, it will fall. So I think when I do this again, I'll probably hide, you know, a few more magnets <laughs> within this panel just to make that super secure. So um, the ribbon closure here is here so that um, as you open out this first uh, album, the pages don't just, you know, splay out. Or if this is handled rather um, roughly and you open this out and this falls, at least, you know, all of your pages just won't kind of start to uh, 
open. Um, so once we open this up, then we have our album pages. And this is the next thing that was um, a little bit different for me. It's the first time that I've actually used acetate as my page base. So I took a long piece of acetate, scored it in half, folded it, ran tape along the bottom, and this is a folded edge, so that's already nice and closed off. And then I'll just take a piece of scrap paper here. Le I left the top open, so it's, you know, kind of your standard pocket page. And that way, whoever gets this, all they have to do is just slip their photo in. So slip their photo, two photos in on um, each page here, and then they're done. Uh, they don't need any special mats. I don't need to put any photo corners on here. You get a nice large photo. This happens to be uh, four inches wide by two and three quarters, the opening. The page itself is roughly uh, just shy of five inches wide and three and five eighths tall. So um, you can kind of decide how large of an opening you want to uh, die cut so that um, more, you know, a larger photo is able to be seen. But, you know, that's entirely up to you. I just kind of like this ratio of sort of border to um, a photo. And what I found, in t speaking in terms of ratio, the eight, the Waffle Flower A2 layering dies have, um, you know, tons of nesting dies, but they um, seem to be a good a good ratio for this um, page size. And so you can see I have a fairly equal border all the way around all four sides. Um, so that's uh, this. And of course, there's photo opportunity here. I didn't put any photo corners. I'll just leave those as decorative. But, um, but those are also areas where photos can be placed. And so I'll go ahead and quickly tie this just to get it secure again. And then um, this back piece here is another photo album. So go ahead and open that out. This side only has six pages and that is because um, originally I had this cut so that the two sides were equal, but I didn't give allowance for the fact that there are magnets here, there's a little bit of space here, so I made this an eighth of an inch um, more narrow, and that just allows everything to kind of fit flush so that the album isn't, you know, um, bowing out beyond the width of what the dresser should be. And because these are two kind of halves of my um, these are the spine, essentially, to my albums. I did decorate the other side so that it looks the same, even though this is just the one panel, the one full panel on the side. So um, lots of uh, little details like that, I think, help to sell the whole, <laughs> the whole unit so that it looks like it's one thing, a dresser, but then you open it up and it's an entirely different thing altogether. Um, the other thing that was a first for me was I actually used Tyvek for my um, hidden hinge spine. And that's a first for me. I like it for a few reasons, and I'll definitely be doing it again. I might try a different style of page, though, on my next one, but, but we'll see. One of the reasons why I decided to use Tyvek is, um, well, there's a few reasons. So one is that Tyvek is resistant to tearing. So as these pages kind of flip, you know, back and forth a lot, um, and as these hinges get open and closed, you're going to be putting a lot of stress onto um, whatever paper or material you use for that hidden hinge. And um, Tyvek is great for that because it can't be torn. That means that our pages are going to stay secured in here no matter how many times this gets flipped back and forth. The other thing that's really nice about using Tyvek is it's very thin material. And so that means that all of the pages fold down very flat. I mean, look how flat that can fold down because there isn't a lot of bulk um, with the hinge. And so that's another reason why I really, really like it. Um, you know, some downsides to why you may not in my case, because I was using white so much and I have white Tyvek, um, 
that camouflages really well because the Tyvek is visible in between the pages where I have that little um, sort of gusset. So um, if you're using a project where maybe your page base is a different color, you may not be able to get a Tyvek um, uh, that matches. And so that could be a downside or a reason why it may not be sort of the best material. Whereas cardstock, you can use, you know, pretty much any color to fit or suit the style of album you're creating. And, um, and so that's one thing to, to kind of, um, be aware of. And then the second is that, because the Tyvek material is so thin, you have to be really careful when you are folding this hidden hinge to make sure that everything lines up and all your fold lines are very square with each other. It can be really easy to get off and get a little bit wonky because when you score Tyvek, the score line is much wider than, um, than it ultimately needs to be when that Tyvek is folded because it's so thin that, um, you know, you don't, at least with my scoring tool, it, it scores quite a broad sort of trench, I suppose. And with normal cardstock, that's fine because, um, when you fold it, the, it just takes up a little bit of extra room in that fold. And so that, um, you know, score line is appropriate and, and useful. But with Tyvek, uh, it's such a thin material that when you score a line, you could be folding kind of anywhere within that space of the score line itself. So you have to pay really close attention to really make sure that your fold lines are um, straight and square with um, another edge. So in this case, the bottom edge. Um, and they'll become a little bit more clear if you watch my tutorial video. I'll, I'll describe that in a little bit more detail and you'll see what how I assemble it. It takes a little bit of extra care to assemble it, but I do think that it's going to result in um, a longer lasting spine ultimately because it is tear resistant. Um, and in terms of the practicality of it, it does, you know, allow your pages to fold nice and flat too. And there's like less bulk and weight in, um, in the spine too. So ultimately I think there's going to be less stress on the book altogether. And speaking of Tyvek, I do use Tyvek to reinforce all of anywhere that there's a hinge. So you can see I'm being, you know, I'm not being ginger, you know, with this because I know that this is lined with Tyvek. And, um, and, you know, over time, even if the cardstock wears down or even tears, the Tyvek's gonna keep that nice and secure. So, um, so a couple of things there that I think, um, you know, really make this a nice and sturdy project. And again, this panel, there's um, opportunity to put a photo here. There's opportunity to put a photo here as well. Um, I decided to, to leave them nice and plain and decorative because I rather like the look of this being sort of the inside of um, the dresser and just being really decorative as opposed to functional as uh, photo display areas. And this this side here, this one, um, the ribbon on this side is just a little bit a little bit more challenging to tie, but definitely possible to do. Um, but again, it's for the exact same reason as why there's ribbon on a ribbon closure on the other side. And that's just so that these pages stay in place and just don't kind of flop open um, when you when you first initially open the album. So there that is in place and that one is nice and even. You can just tuck all of that in, fold it up, lock it on the side here. Um, what did I do with these? So I think that goes like that. One of the things with this is I would definitely um, make sure that you have the polarity on all of your magnets as you're placing them going in the same direction because as you just saw a second ago I did not pay attention to that so these 
um, panels are very specifically matched to whether they can be on the left side or the right side. So that is definitely something that is a uh, room for improvement next time. Um, and then the other thing that I'm going to improve on next time is down here too. So I didn't realize that this piece came up over the side. And so you, you can't glue this down permanently. This, this needs to be open so that you can open both of the albums um, nice and flat. So I um, last minute had to come up with a magnetic closure um, and I had already assembled and actually glued down three of the four sides. So um, next time though, I'm, I'll just go ahead and use the same method that I did for placing magnets into these panels for placing magnets at least into this panel here because this is multiple layers of cardstock so that all of the feet here are nice and sturdy and um, can kind of withstand the weight of the mini albums. And so once these magnets are embedded onto this uh, front, front set of legs, then this can sit nice and flush against there. And so it'll just have a nice cleaner finish that way. And um, I don't mind so much the magnets showing on the backside here um, because uh, it's more getting the front piece and this piece here to kind of sit flush with each other that I think uh, impacts how this looks. But ultimately, um, that is uh, how my album turned out, which I really, really love. And as I mentioned, you know, it's um, a lot of new things that I tried. And so it took a while to put together, but I think the next one will go a lot faster. Um, and it's just a fun project. And I think it's going to be so cute to have this kind of standing up in your house and then, you know, when guests come over, you actually whip it out and actually reveal that there's actually a couple of photo albums inside and you can actually um, show off all of your photos. But, you know, in the meanwhile, it's a nice sort of decorative element in your room. So I hope that uh, you enjoyed this video. And as I mentioned, I do have a tutorial um, for how I made this one. So if you want to check that out, I'll link to it at the end of this video. Thank you so much. And uh, until my next video, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye.